next building committee meeting for April 4th will be in order. And just as a, a, a passing remark to the fellows on the on the screen, the uh, right to have uh, the authorization to have virtual meetings was supposed to expire last Friday, uh, March 31st, but uh, in the governor's supplemental budget, they increased or they, they extended the time for virtual meetings, virtual, virtual participation to March 31st, 2025. So <laughs> I, I trust that this group won't be still having meetings anywhere near. The uh, calendar year of 2025, but uh, that's uh, in case you want to go to other meetings. All right, so we'll be in order at uh, 6:02. Uh, everybody seen the agenda? Then into uh, approval of the minutes from March 7th. Everybody seen the minutes? I assume. I yeah. trust. Yeah. Yes. A second. There wasn't one. Oh. Okay. I see. Him. All right, Steve. This is—it's not working, is Steve? Help me out. You. Oh. Uh, I make a motion to approve the agenda for tonight and the minutes, March seven. I second. Good boy. Bo call vote. All Flaherty aye. Steve Rapid tonight. Mike Hall aye. Yeah. Don Spargo. Don Spargo aye. Okay. Justin Ball aye. All right, so that unanimous action. Mr. Kirby, OPM update. Before I, before before you start that, Steve, I, I just want to just uh, let everybody know that this has been we're we're coming to the close of this uh, this adventure that we've all been on, uh, which started. Oh God, I don't know when when we started the. Um, uh, feasibility group and all that so it's been a it's been a long haul and, and I, I thank everybody for their uh, participation and commend uh, Mr. Kirby and T2 and company and uh, we'll, uh, we'll go forward the building is almost complete as I said and next time maybe we'll have a meeting over there we thought about it uh, having it there today but I was questioning how we were going to the screens on in yet, so we'd have to do it on our own individual laptops. So we opted to come here. All right. Having said that, Mr. Kirby. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, so OPM report for um, April 4th's committee meeting. Um, <clears throat> construction progress since our last meeting. Uh, MEPFP finishes and inspections have been done. Uh, HVAC testing and balancing report in draft form has been submitted. Uh, interior painting is nearly there. They're doing they're doing punch list, uh, door glazing, uh, millwork, kitchen equipment startup, flooring uh, has been installed. Uh, window the the manual window shades are in. The motorized are still um, in route. I think they're they're being delivered tomorrow. Um, interior room signage, uh, the temp generator has been wired and inspected. Um, we do need a, a letter from the wiring inspector, but I spoke with Joe from uh, Hutter, and that's supposed to uh, supposed to be set up for tomorrow, I believe. Um, the uh, uh, the punch list, uh, interior punch list has been issued and they've been uh, working items off of it. Um, building inspection, uh, uh, code enforcement did issue a TCO on the 21st, but it did have a conditions list, which included um, some library room load, uh, load signage, um, occupancy signage, uh, the grade at the service entrance, which is, is now being worked on. Uh, we're looking for pictorials on the signage, but um, we do have the uh, room name and numbers uh, and the Braille. A uh, HERS test, which is which is a, actually a residential test, not commercial. Affidavits and the possibility of handicap push buttons at the south doors to the playground, um, which they were going to um, 
look into. We haven't heard anything on that yet. Uh, final cleaning uh, has been uh, going on uh, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the FF and E installation is nearly complete. Uh, there's some some items that are still to be delivered, and uh, we have noted some items that are damaged that need to be replaced. Uh, the site work restarted on the 31st, and they were working at the service entry and the north uh, elevation of the building along Route 140. Uh, network, network switches were installed, and they were temporary, and the, the Wi-Fi is up and running. And uh, Maya um, uh, switched the insurance over on the 30th to uh, regular um, town building in, uh, insurance. Uh, the schedule look ahead, uh, issuance of, of the certificate of substantial completion, because even though we have a TCO, uh, the certificate of substantial completion hasn't been issued because there are items that need to be done to actually make the, the building occupiable. Uh, we've gone over that with Hutter. A number of them are done. A few have to be done, including um, correcting the lighting control system, which uh, the tech is due in uh, tomorrow and Thursday to to work that out. There's a couple bathrooms that the lights cannot be turned on, so they can't occupy a building if you don't have lights in the toilet rooms. Uh, like I said, the motorized shades are coming, completion of interior punch list, connections for the rain barrel outside. Uh, exterior painting was supposed to start this week. Um, exterior building signage, uh, fencing. Uh, I know the fencing sub came back today um, or actually uh, yesterday. Um, landscaping uh, has to be done. The top course of paving, which is scheduled for the 24th. Then followed by seal coating of the VFW lot and striping. Uh, we did mark out some other areas for patching to be done, which has been quantified. Uh, FF and E punch list has to, has to be uh, done. Uh, AV installation, telephone system, intrusion system setup and startup. Uh, and then the library move is scheduled for the 19th and ESS, I should say ESS move. On the 27th, I know the the contract for the library mover has been signed. Um, I think the ESS is, is due to be signed, or it's it's just been signed. And then um, the, what we've been talking about for a while, the generator delivery shipment date was we still don't have confirmation, but the last we heard was 428. So we know that's that installation is going to be done in the month of of may but the temporary um generator like i mentioned is up and running and set for automatic start in case of loss of power uh any any questions on um progress or, or look ahead before i go into some photos okay um Actually, let me, I'm going to skip that for a second. I'll go into the, the photo documentation, then I'll come back to it. Uh, I've got a few, I'm, I'm, I don't know if anybody's been over there besides Paul and Steve, but um, this is the large programming room that was being used somewhat as a staging area for the furniture um, uh, vendors. And then we've got uh, the sitting area in the library uh, with the furniture. This is sort of dead center of the of the library along the west wall. And then you've got the ESS adult lounge uh, with furniture set up. Um, there'll be one, one of the screens will be going on this wall here. Uh, the classroom group room furniture um, set up. A couple views of that. Uh, library uh, with the sh with shelving and furniture, sort of a, an overview, and then um, uh, sort of a ground level view facing north, and then a ground level view uh, facing south. The library shelving and uh, some library uh, uh, furniture, some study um, study desks. Those those have. Uh, integral power and uh, data uh, so they can be set up for for uh, computer stations. 
Uh, this is the library reception area. This is ESS reception area and lobby looking out towards the parking lot. Uh, handrail for the west uh, exterior slope sidewalk was installed recently as well as uh, um, that's just turned the other way. Uh, looking at the, <clears throat> the stair handrail uh, heading towards the, uh, the service area. Uh, this is uh, was one of the recent change orders to install a retaining wall for the uh, engineered wood fiber at the playground where there was a, a great change. Uh, this mound of uh, uh, wood fiber does have to be smoothed out. Um, and it can be now that this uh, uh, small retaining wall is, has been installed. Then uh, the, the site guy started spreading loom out at the uh, north driveway entry along 140. And this is the, the north elevation of the building. That's where the up lights are going to be installed. And uh, again, the, the site guy is, is grading off the, the service entrance off of 140. Just a couple views of that. I think that's it. All right, so I got to I do want to go back over a few other issues. So other issues uh, in regard to the project um, incentives, uh, we do have an Ever Eversource gas and National Grid Mass Save uh, Energy incentive that we've had um, applications for that at, at this point we've all gone back with signatures. Uh, there is a there is a process to that. It's it's just not automatic. Um, there you do have to have an inspection. They will come out and and verify that what we say was installed is actually installed. But those were the numbers that they had initially come up with: uh, thirty-two four thirty-one from gas and fourteen thousand five hundred eighty-two from mass save slash uh, national grid. Uh, certificate of substantial completion, as I mentioned, um, we do have a TCO, but the building uh, needs to be able to be occupied. We did have a uh, lighting control issue. We did have equipment in the kitchen that still had to be um, uh, connected in order to, uh, to allow the kitchen to be usable. But at that time, once uh, the substantial completion certificate is issued, then utility costs will be transferred to the owner. Right now, they're under, under Hutter's. Um, responsibility and uh, the insurance goes to Yona, but uh, that that's already been done. That's that's already been covered. Uh, owner list of tasks. I, I know uh, Steve uh, has has a list and that's a separate item on the agenda, so we'll skip that. Uh, ESS large program room tables. Uh, Maggie's um, uh, working on that to to switch out those tables and make sure that the uh, we don't have any kind of tripping hazard for uh, the the feet and the wheels on the tables. Uh, lighting control package. Uh, there's this this was had been some miscommunication somewhere along the line as far as uh, whether it was web based or not. That has now been confirmed that the lighting control package is web based. We did have a meeting yesterday with um, the engineer T2 myself. Uh, people from the town, um, and also Cooper Lighting and uh, uh, Trellis, I believe representatives were there. Uh, it was at that point it it had been pretty pretty much confirmed that they have to come back and do some more programming. Uh, but the uh, lighting package can be controlled uh, without having to be in the building, and uh, we will get additional training. Which I know Matthew is is looking forward to. So that you can turn lights on and off at will. Um, so that that was an issue that that is now basically resolved. Uh, schedule wise, Steve, Steve, did that does that include the outside lighting, the uh, the lamps in the parking lot? Correct. So that you don't have to be in the parking lot now to control them. That was my understanding from the from the meeting. Uh, I guess we'll see for sure, but um, 
Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. It was the lighting package was inclusive of interior and exterior. You're muted, Chris. Uh, there were two different uh, light, lighting systems, but I, I, I really don't remember if you said that. I, I'm pretty sure you actually have to be somewhere within the vicinity of the parking lot to um, turn those lights on and off, but it's a what but that itself is a wireless system. It's not a wired system, but they pretty much have like Bluetooth adapters on each one of those poles. And I'm pretty sure that there's a range associated with those. Um, because that's not attached to that web based system, which controls remotely from anywhere, which is the the interior light system. Well, I, I'd have to double check. There might be a way to be able to do that. I mean, it is a wireless system, so there has to be a way to be able to put it onto the network. So I just I'm not sure about that, but I, I, no. we can something, confirm that something we could ask. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so the schedule. Uh, it's, it's changed a little bit. Um, you know, TCO was issued. How does substantial completion is to be determined? But I think it's it's probably going to be this week, maybe the end of this week, with the lighting squared away. Uh, punchless inspection is ongoing because we've only done the interior. Still have exterior of the building, and we're not going to do that till the painter says he's done. Um, and then civil site landscaping. Um, Essentially, the interior architectural and I'd say most of the mechanical uh, is is finished on the inside of the building. Uh, we still do have to do a commissioning also, but that that is underway. Um, the HVAC sub has forwarded their um, their documentation, their pre-functional test documentation uh, this morning uh, for uh, to get con uh, commissioning uh, scheduled. Uh, furniture delivery and in, uh, installation is ongoing. There's some back ordered stuff. Uh, the generator, which we, I talked about earlier, uh, figuring that's going to be installed uh, in the month of May. Um, the library and ESS opening is still right now scheduled for May 1st. And the ribbon cutting dedication is the 14th. So, any. Uh, any questions on any of that or I'll go I'll start going into the. The Indeed, money well, stuff. Point out, um, you said you had the air balancing report, but I question how they could do the air balancing if they hadn't commissioned the HVAC system first. No, they, they, they got they got a draft draft uh, tab report that the, the commissioning agent wants before he does the commissioning. Understood. And we also right. needed that. We also needed that to, to show the in the inspector that we had air exchange. So that's that, uh, Mike. That's in the process right now. Thank you. Okay. So budget update um, again. Budget status uh, was was still was still good on contingency. Um, I'll, I'll do a um, a budget update once we get change order twelve fully resolved. But we are uh, we are nowhere near exhausting our contingency. Um, I know uh, Chris is going to go through this, but we, you know, proposed change orders. There's been 87 PCOs submitted to date. We have sort of a running uh, uh, approval on change order number 12 with four PCOs. Again, I, I'm not going to go over those. Chris will, but um, they're they're small and they actually they actually total a a, 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 a net credit to date. But there, there's a few other PRs that are out there that haven't been priced yet. And then um, then I'm into um, invoice approvals. Any questions before I start running down the invoices? OK. So we have um, Hutter's application for payment 17. Uh, for $269,084.71 that I have split up to capital and CPA per the chart. Uh, Vertex, um, I did forward, and I forwarded these invoices earlier today. Uh, a Vertex invoice is only in draft format because it's so early in the month, uh, they haven't finalized it yet. 
but that amount uh, will be $33,677.25 for the month of March. Uh, T2's uh, invoice 2005-27 was for $17,000, excuse me, $860 which was the not to exceed 15,000 for uh, T2 personnel and then 2860 was for Stiferro, which is the uh, furniture uh, subconsultant. It's Myron Tachi had a small invoice uh, 49225 uh, for $420.75 for uh, commissioning in the month of March. Um, they still have a balance on their contract, which will be when they do come out and do the commissioning. Uh, and then there was there was uh, nothing for Yankee. So the total amount is three hundred twenty one thousand forty two dollars and seventy one cents. I do have the invoices attached if anybody wants. Any, to any, anything. any questions regarding the invoices? In what percentage are we? Ninety six. Hutter's 96 percent based right, on I, the based on I, the I, I, I got a call. I'm closer. All right, you're closer. <laughs> I'm getting, I feel like brochure now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess the motion would be to approve three hundred twenty-one thousand thirty-two dollars and seventy-one cents split as per uh, the chat on the board. Right, so I'll make a motion to approve the invoices presented by Vertex. Total amount is $321,042.71. All to be paid from capital construction. Any technology. Well, there's a split. There's a little CPA. There's a split on Harvard. Yeah, Harvard's yeah. 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 got C CPA of uh, $3,731. Okay. So um, the motion is as shown in uh, Vertex. Uh, presentation. <clears throat> Any second? Any more? Any discussion? Oh. Hearing none. <clears throat> roll call vote. All flattery aye. Keep rocking tonight. Mike Hall aye. D Hackler aye. Don Spargo aye. Justin Ballard aye. Uh, unanimous action. Yes. Uh, the only other item I have uh, is, I'm sure we, I don't have anything. I think I only got invoices after that, yeah. So I'll take, I'll stop sharing. Uh, the only other uh, item I have is, is uh, a public records request came in uh, this morning from an attorney representing the, um, the iron workers looking for certified payrolls for the miscellaneous metals and ornamental file sub bid, uh, which is fine. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put those together. That, the, that sub is uh, Needham certified welding, uh, but they're also looking for the, a copy of their subcontract, which the town does not have because our contract is with the general contractor, not directly with the uh, subcontractors. So I will, I will uh, give, uh, give uh, Denise a draft response so that that can that can go back to them. And, it, and it, it's kind of ironic, isn't it, that that's the trade that had the least involvement in the project that wants all this information? Well, I think they're, they're just targeting the, the specific subcontractor, I'm, I'm sure regardless of the size of the of the oh. contract i think it was i think their i think their bid was 80 something thousand dollars so it, it, it was it wasn't a lot right. but we'll we'll you know we'll answer it as it was asked and only we're only able to give them what what we what we actually have is documentation <laughs> that's, it. that's it all right T, T2, who's it going to be? That'd be me. Hey, not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be me. All right, uh, Chris. Let me share here. You guys can see everything? Yes. Yes. All righty. 
get to it. So um, with this presentation, we're just going to show the what, what Steve was talking about was just the ongoing change order 12. Um, we're going to probably put that on the next uh, pay rec. Um, so we're trying to get some of the other PRs that we're also waiting pricing for that I'll go through on that change order as well. So as of right now, uh, we made a signage lettering change, which is we added a few signs on the front of the building um, to show both the Upton Library and the uh, social yeah. service center. Yeah, the, the, the COA center um, on the outside uh -huh. of the building. ESS. So, ESS. What is that? ESS. Oh, ES, uh, ESS, I'm sorry. Um, signs on the outside of the building. So we added those and swapped out a few of the interior ones. Um, we had gone over this whole change prior to in a, in a previous uh, building committee meeting. But that change is 11010. Um, to add those additional signs. Uh, the next change was the non-conforming sprinkler heads came back at 1648.89. Um, the hands-free hand wash sink was a request um, made by Mr. Flaherty um, for 1379.40. And I'll review that briefly as far as, um, you know, the change to getting a hands-free hand wash sink. Um, the playground signage posts, uh, we opted to the, so the town's going to take over doing the playground signage post and mounting the playground sign um, outside the playground. So we took that scope of work off of Hutter's um, docket and that was for 320 bucks. So right now with all of these, with these four PCOs running, we, we've we decreased um, the overall project sum by 479.39. But after I go over some of these other PRs, that's probably likely to go up. However, the PRs that I'm going to go over are really minor. So for the most part, um, in, in any event, none of these are really going to be a lot. Um, they'll wind up being a wash. Um, so first, what's already on change order 12 is the change to just the faucet on the hands wash uh, on the uh, the hand wash sink in the kitchen. It will now be hands free. So it comes now with like a little sensor that's just going to swap out the faucet itself. Um, you can kind of see on this little front here that there's a little sensor and then a little switch to manually also manually shut off the faucet. Um, so pretty much changing this faucet out for what was already there, which was not um, a hands free faucet. The next again is 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 updating the sign instead of doing the metal posts and having them just re put a new sign into these existing metal posts. Um, I think the last scheme that we got the town was opting to do some kind of a granite post system. Um, so again, we right now I think the decision is still trying to be made as to how we're going to mount this, but um, in any event, we're taking that out of Hutter's scope of work. Chris, just just as an FYI on that, I've talked to the woman, uh, the Science Plus lady. They are in the process of fabricating the sign. They will give me a day's notice when they're ready to install it, and I will show them where it is to be installed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just and just to be clear, the the credit is just for the labor to reinstall an existing sign. It's you know, the town is changing the sign out and adding to it, but the original right. scope was to uh, replace the the old sign. So it's it's that's why it's seems like it might be a little little low. It's just it's just labor to set two posts. Yeah. Uh, so the first PR actually partially already got done. We had asked them to and these are all a lot of these PRs were all from essentially when we went around and started doing our punch listing, um, things that were just missing or just, again, little things that we wanted to tidy up. Um, first is in the adult lounge is we opted to paint this entire closet yellow. Um, so just added paint and they'd already had to touch up paint anyway in this closet. So we just figured that we, you know, have them do it yellow. Um, and then to the right of that, you guys can, you guys will see 
The other part of that is you can see the picture down below of the chair rail that doesn't line up. So we're asking them to just add a piece of millwork under here. So that way everything kind of lines up um, throughout the space. So two little minor adjustments in the adult lounge. You're muted, Chris. Oh, well, that happened. But um, next is to just make sure that all this uh, there's just various millwork pieces that need to be touched up. Uh, so adding you know additional millwork in a few spots where it needs to get wrapped. Um, next is there's two PRs on the slide. So the, to the left, again, we're just asking them to finish the inside of this closet as the darker gray that you guys see on the lower part portion of the wall underneath the chair rail. We're just going to have them do the um, entire closet gray as well like that to match it. Um, and then that so that that closet that closet's in the COA. The other is in the adult lounge. Um, and then to the right. Uh, we have the roll up door at the COA center and um, what we're asking them to do is right now we have that uh, or the space above that uh, roll up door is all gypsum. And what we have right now is to paint that. Um, so what we're asking them to do is also just wrap it with um, wrap the opening with additional trim there. Um, the next PR is the sign exchanges from the um, from the building commissioner and the town. Um, we walked around with um, both Maggie and Matthew and a few other people, and then also got some rec well got some recommendations from the town of um, of what signs they wanted to add additionally. So the the building commissioner had wanted to add. Um, occupancy signs on either side of the library, so we're adding those two. Um, additionally, uh, Maggie had asked if she could switch offices, so in order to try and make it as simple of a change as possible, the, the easiest way to do it is just to keep the room numbers the same and change the room titles on the sign. So that's that's an additional two more um, signs there. And <clears throat> the last one, which I'm sorry is covered is to add eight employee only signs. Again, that was a recommendation made by um, Mr. Town Manager Joe Layden and Matthew, um, the librarian, because there were some, I guess, picketers that sometimes go into buildings like this and try to get into spaces that aren't labeled as employees only. So we walked around with them and um, establish the locations where we were going to have those signs. Um, <clears throat> the next change is we have some outlets installed on these walls. This existing location is a little bit low, so it's a little bit difficult to actually utilize those outlets. Um, so we're having them move them to these new locations here and here. Um, <clears throat> So there's two outlets in the kitchen that are getting removed or not removed, but shifted to higher locations that can be used. Um, the original outlets will be blank plated, so we won't make any patches or anything in the FRP. We'll just cover them. <clears throat> the next PR is adding um, bumpers to the back sides of some of the doors. Again, we walked around with um, Matthew and kind of established a few doors that we wanted to have both door stops and bumpers on them. Um, so there's a few of those. Again, I think um, two wall stops and a couple kick down um, stops. Um, the last one is adding a grommet into the corner of the COA desk. Um, so just adding an additional grommet, essentially, again, very small change, but additional scope. Um, 
So this is just a summary again of those those PRs that we're waiting for. Again, they're mostly all minor finish changes. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any questions about any of those or if you want me to go back on any of those. Chris, didn't we have another one that 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 came out? I thought. Um, hold on. That we were contemplating. <clears throat> oh, the the uh, the flooring <clears throat> color. Yeah, we're we're, we're so, issuing that as an ASI instead. We think that that was yeah. There's four pieces of green that need to be replaced, right? Is that the one? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So that we we're they are gonna re we whether it's an ASI or a PR. Essentially, what we're looking at it as is is that. To get those four swapped, there were some other errors made in laying that floor. So we're looking to see if we can get, you know, pretty much a, an even swap for that and, and have a zero dollar credit. Um, but again, yeah, that that's for four. It's the four green sheets of avocado, the, the avocado green sheets in the um, in the floor of the large program room and only the large ro uh, large program room. So. Um, But yeah, so I'm I'm talking with Joe about that one still. We'll see what, see what's going to happen with that. This is the is it the intent that the um, the PRs will get folded into change order twelve? Is that the intent? Yeah, I mean, Co correct. Okay. <laughs> Steve, you, earlier in the discussion, you had mentioned that there was um, a question about putting a handicap door operator on, on a playground egress door. Yes. That came from the inspection uh, walk walk around for the TCO from um, someone that that walked with uh, Pat Roach and I think uh, Steve Nelson was there um, as a recommendation. It is based on what T2 has looked at and what we talked about previously during design. The the, the doors are handicapped accessible as far as width goes but the push button and with the operator uh it is not required so i get that was relayed to um code enforcement they were going to do their own research on it we haven't heard anything back yet on that issue but this there's, there's two there's two storefront type doors that go from the children's library section and then the group classroom out to the uh, playground area. How difficult is it going to be to pull two electrical circuits onto those door locations? Very. It, yeah, it, well, first, I mean, first off, those systems are expensive to begin with, uh, and then may, may require uh, hardware modifications too. These do Mike, these doors have crash bars on them. Yeah, okay. No, and then it has to be integrated with the security system too. You don't want to be able to walk up and hit the button and the doors lock when the thing tries to open because the motor. So there's, there's a whole process there that. Uh, yeah, that yeah, the, about the, mo the motor power. would have to be made in you know. Um, somehow you have to make it uh, the motor uh, turn off so that someone's not outside at night trying to open the door and burning out the uh, the closer motor. Right. So, I mean, it, there's a whole process there. That it, it just Getting the power there before we move in was probably the most intrusive thing of it all. And that's why I was asking. We had we talked consider? about this in the design phase. Huh? This was talked about in the design phase, as I recall. Yeah. But either way, if there's no electrical circuit available, and I'm thinking it probably needs to be from the emergency power also at the end of that, too. I'm just curious should we get a price on what it would take to get the electrical circuits? Out to those locations and bought because if they call us out on it, there's not a lot of fighting going on here. You got to do it. Well, we're confident in the guidance we've gotten from the architect that it's not necessary. Okay. That so what we have there is code. Am I, Peter Tarowski, would you weigh in on that? Um, yeah, I believe so. And and frankly, I would want to limit those operators generally because they are problematic 
during occupancy. They do have, they, they're always problematic. I don't know if you found that, Steve or or Mike, but they're, there's always issues yeah. with them. So you don't yeah, want they're to have expensive them and then they're maintenance yeah. issues. Yeah. Not that I want to put these things in. I think we're, we're covered the way we are, but just pulling the electrical circuits to that before we move in, because there's going to be disruption. You know, when they're doing touch up painting, et cetera, et cetera. If it's, if it's a major league job, I wouldn't even entertain it, but it's yeah, dropped they, they, most of the way. Those areas are, are, I mean, essentially, I showed pictures of that. That, that, that room is, is done or both those rooms are done you know there's there's wood trim there's you said there's ceilings i mean yeah can it could it be done if it had to be done sure you can do anything but it's it's how much destructive work are you going to have to do to get there yeah. you know but you know the door frame i i i believe one of I believe one of the um one of the door frames has wiring in it already but i think that was for for the uh, for a card reader correct yeah future card reader yeah but one one of them has nothing so um it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing period. we don't nothing we want it we don't we want to do if we don't have to thank you all right Any, anybody else waiting on that all right chris continue on here uh so that was it so i mean do you guys i don't know if you guys have any questions about these or if you want me to go over them again um or anything like that i think matthew and i are aware of most of them anyway so matthew's yeah it's all pretty minor stuff so minor it couldn't be as chris said it shouldn't add up to much <clears throat> and as we are with 12, it's a credit at this point. So. Uh, Steve Brackenton? Yes. Well, we, the issue with the signs that was talked about earlier. If we want to want to touch on that again. Signs. Um, that's on your. Oh, you have your sub points on your bullets and video and all that about the about the the occupancy signs too um so right now we left it as to be determined we there's a few things that we want to go over too just with the the building commissioner just to make sure that we're on the same page of what he was expecting um as far as the signs on either side of the library and what we're assuming that it's the big you know open area of the library but we just want to make sure kind of touch touch base with him and, and some of the town so Suppose that he's back either today or tomorrow, because um, that's the information I got from from Hutter this morning. He's back from his vacation. And and Chris, the day I was there with him when they did that uh, walkthrough for the TCO, that was yep. the question he asked a couple of times: is What's the occupancy? What's the load for that main room? Right. Yeah. Because there was this signs every other place and all the other in the other large gathering areas there is a capacity sign right what is our capacity ask them in what is our capacity 95. well the big room is 95. The big room is 95 the small room is 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 14. uh help me out help me out chris classroom 31. classroom's 31 and I don't know. Is there a sign at the children's area? No. 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 Uh, no. It's yeah. It's only the large and 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 group rooms. Um, but yeah. So in right now, I mean, there's a few few different ways to look at it. So really, we just kind of want to review it with the commissioner and and make sure that we we we're on the same page as far as what what he's looking at as far as that that open space is concerned because. Again, there's there's the lobbies, there's the bit the bus center. Um, I don't know if we're including all of those kinds of spaces. Again, we did our own calculations on the plan, and I can send you guys those. Um, however, you know, as we'll, far as we'll we'll talk to Pat I, this week if we can when we're out there on Thursday. I think we'll just let's just do that. Yep. Make sure we're all right. 
that answer you, Mike? No, I came up with 140 out of the numbers they were throwing out. We got to get it to like 175. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you have well, the kitchen is the kitchen. I know the yeah, kitchen. No, it's all total, all the whole place. Like the kitchen, the kitchen is 14. Yeah, I got that. I did the whole map. All right. Board. I oh, saw some. Total. Yeah, the the total that's on, that's calculated on our plan is like 400, pretty much. It's about oh. 400 people. Throughout throughout the COA, throughout every every throughout the whole building, as it's calculated, it's about 400 people, but. Oh, that's great. I'll stay with that. Let's see what else they come up with. Yeah, men's room is 50. Yeah, no, that's good. And that's fine. I just want to be out of 200. A lot of times, it, what it is is the plumbing restrict, restricts that, that number, actually. So we just, yeah, again. The plumbing. <clears throat> if they went by the plumbing fixtures, we'd probably get knocked down a big right. number. Thank you. Yep. Right, anybody else on that? Steve? Uh, you want to go with the signs and your, your bullet points here about the men's club and the video surveillance and that you want me to talk to that or you can so we're gonna uh, we're gonna hang the men's club sign sure. on the on the fence the fence isn't complete i was down there today yeah somewhere chris Ooh, chris yep. why don't you stop sharing oh <laughs> The playground sign from Science Plus um, will be located next to the bike rack by the parking lot. Um, did you get a final picture from Lisa? She did it yesterday. She's she's talked with uh, Tim Glissman from Science Plus, and they're working on that. I get it. She just got the picture yesterday. So okay, so that's uh, it, it's in the works. In the works. I just got to. Uh, they don't have the verbiage. So you have it. I have the verb energy. I thought I gave it to Lisa, but she says no. So okay. I will talk to them. And do you know if the trustees have on the other way around? We have the verbiage and I'm waiting on the phone. Okay. <laughs> and it's not it's not necessary that the both signs come from the same place because they're not going to be seen at the same time. So okay. the keep in mind that the the uh brochure recognition sign is uh, uh work through with Valley Tech. Yeah. Um, Don, do you know if the Boy Scouts are going to do a pollinator sign? They are. I got a note from them the yeah. other day that uh, they're going to. Uh, that went from uh, me, Paul, my wife, all sorts of people touched that. But Paul has that the, uh, the answer for that. Yes, the troop committee met last week, came up with the following sign, pollinator garden 2018. Eagle Scout Project, David Ferrero, 2.32 up in Mass. So, so who's making that sign? That's them. Who's making the sign? Oh, boy. So, so, now it's back in my lap. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to find well, typically, out. Typically, for, for Eagle Scout projects, does the, does the scouts, does the scout troop do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, they'll take care of it. Yeah. Okay, so it's it's on the Boy Scouts to do that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I guess it's not on the town. That's all we need. Not on the. That's all we need to know. Yeah. Um, two other things. Um, um, the BBT video arts kids are making a um, um, a video that shows the progress of the construction of the building and also acknowledges both Jim Brochu and John Robertson. And that video, um, the intent is that video will be playing um, on during the dedication uh, ceremony on June 14th. Um, the other thing they're gonna do for us is they're gonna create a short version of that, which we're going to display on the monitor in the obby of Denmark on town meeting day, May 4th. May 4th. Nice. So that video that will have a short little video about the building uh, going on that monitor as people are coming in for the town meeting. And that's all being done by the kids at BBT. What are they using as photos, Steve? Um, photos that you've taken, photos that I've taken, photos okay. from the 
<laughs> you know, the drone photos, you know, I, I, I've given them a gazillion photos. So okay. <laughs> how, they, how they're going to pick which ones to use is up to them. Yeah. Um, the other thing they're going to try to do is highlight the fact that um, this building that contains a library and a senior center and a playground is probably the only one of its kind in the state. Um, so they want to play that up too, because this is kind of a unique, a unique building in that regard. So. Yep, true. Okay. I got a question. How is the public going to know how they can use the facility? I know we're going to do a soft opening, but is the town tonight? Open? Tonight at the selectmen's meeting, they're supposed to be voting on your building use policy. That's just room room reservations. Room, well, room reservations. Yeah. But we're starting, you know, both library department and Maggie's department in town hall, we're starting our sort of social media rollout of you know the buildings opening and here's what's in it. And we have some materials, like I have a handout. If someone who it's the first time they've ever been in the building, I've got a handout that has a map on one side and like library services and ESS services on the other side. So we're putting that kind of stuff. The building will not be open 24-7. Oh, no. So there's going to be, I think there's going to be a way for people in the community to reserve a room in the building right. during normal hours. Yeah, but just letting people know. I mean, I still have people that walk in the library and say, hey, what are they building around the corner? <laughs> right? And these are, these are library users. So we do have some work to do. And sort of just making the public aware that hey, we're opening May first, and this is what's in there. Should, well, we're making all these signs. Should we be putting a sign at the old library telling them where to go to move? Yeah, I can print one. I, not not a fancy one, but I'll print something and put it on the door. Look, looking for the library? <laughs> well, there is going to be a two week period almost that they're going to be closed. They're going to be closed. Sure. And people are going to look for something. Yeah. Excellent. All right, with again through you and the men's club, we got that communication sign. Yeah, we'll get that up. And uh, <clears throat> when I'm finished the fence, I, I did have another question. I was in the back thing and I didn't want to bring it up, but there's a stump right in the corner of the fence at the very back corner. There was a stump left right there. It's like the perfect getaway. Like the kid runs over to the stump, jumps on the stump, comes up to the fence, and he's gone. So, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to suggest that we grind the stump down, but it, it's, it's. I know they cut it. <clears throat> oh, yeah, they cut it down. They left the stump about a foot and a half off the ground, and then you get on top of that, and then you're over the fence. I'll have to look at that. I don't remember seeing that. No, we, we asked, we asked, we talked about that specifically, and that was designated to stay. Um, as is, we had that conversation with uh, Dotson yeah. and Flinter. Because because we I looked at it and said, oh, we got a mistake here. And they're like, no, no, that that stays. So it's like a feature. Yeah, it's almost like a play feature. You know, you sit on it, you jump it's up. It's an escape feature. It's got a play feature. <laughs> 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 uh, we put, we'll put 110 we'll t put 110 to the fence mike and then it'll be a life lesson <laughs> we'll electrify the fence I, know, I didn't want to bring it up because it, it seemed ridiculous but i, I was like this, yeah no on. no no it, it did come up already yes all right the, the next item here is the uh moving day opening plans it's already been alluded to that the uh, Matthew is starting to move the library, and uh, Maggie will be moving materials from the from the senior center. The treadmill and the other device, I think, is being scheduled to move either Wednesday or Thursday of Tomorrow. this week. Tomorrow. And uh, there is a, a weight uh, area over there that I'm. I'm I'm questioning on that. I'd like to see Chris. Could you? I asked you to send me the information earlier on the information. Can you also send me the specific as how that that weight, uh, the bench and the hand weights came about? Muted. Muted. Chris, you're muted. You're muted, Chris. Muted. 
<laughs> I believe that's uh that was that was through a government grant, I think, with uh with Janice, right? She had kind of gone through a government grant and got yeah. those sent she, to her. She got the tread she got the treadmill as far as I know, it was only the it was only the treadmill. Okay. Yeah, to, 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 the okay. total fit the weights is is a purchase order through okay. total fitness. Well, I can I can I can look into it definitely and get back to you. Yeah, right. was that, so, so was that Janice that ordered that? I don't think that was through FF&E. Yeah. So you guys, I'm just going to weigh in on this because I have the invoice for the weights. Yep. They did come from Total Fitness, but the bill to is Strafora. Yeah. So, oh. um, and oh, Emily is the contact person. So All right. could, maybe somebody can reach out to her. Yes, um, we'll, it, we will. Yeah, well, that, yeah that, was, that was one of the POs that, that Kelly issued based on the... the, the uh, the furniture quotes. I think there was six, and Total Fitness was one of them. Because uh, last last Thursday, uh, Libby and I looked at them to, looked at them together, and uh, they're I, super aggressive. I don't think it was what Libby would have visualized in 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 that particular room. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, they're they're no. uh, very very heavy weights. Yeah, I can't <laughs> even. The top row is as far as I can get. Well, there's there's two fifties, two forties, four thirties, and there. Yeah. it goes down. I think visually we would be looking at you know the plastic coated one pound, two pound, three pound. Uh, right. So, yeah. I mean, maybe those could go to another facility like right. the the fire department or the police department, and right. you get the the nice colored uh, coated, you know, okay. one and two pound weights. Right. I spoke, I spoke with you, Bradley, today. They have a substantial weight area there, but we'll see what happens with that. Okay. Uh, anybody else have anything to discuss here? Public comment. I see there's uh, somebody up there, RH, in the top corner. <laughs> That's, That's us. us. Huh? That's us. That's, oh, really? <laughs> Oh, it I, was, I, thought, it, I thought it was somebody with a hand up. Is there any? All right, no. I don't see anybody there. Uh, next meeting. It's not, I can't see we're going to have all that many more times together. <laughs> I can tell Louie's that broken, you know. Well, I don't I mean, we've got to go through close out. We've got to go through punch yeah. list. We've got to go move all in. Right. We're going to have a couple more rounds of invoices but um it, yeah it's it's getting close to being yeah you know maybe not once a month maybe there's something that comes up further down the line but ideally a couple more and that would be it that would be great and we'd miss you all of course <laughs> yes yes of course i don't i don't de detect a lot of sincerity in that comment <laughs> it's, it is absolutely sincere <laughs> absolutely uh, <laughs> you said May second. What about May ninth? May May first. That's that first week. They're going to be moving in. Yes, yeah, so May second. In, in the process, could we do this uh, the second week? Yeah. I mean, and could and could we do it there? I I know uh, uh, Steve and I are in there on a regular basis, but if the rest of the committee had, would be uh, May ninth is election meeting. Okay, I guess we're not going to do it then. We should do it earlier. The one out the week earlier. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. May second. Yeah, because you know what? It, it, this punch list items and this change what needs to be happening. We can keep that's going. Well, it's the building's going to be open by then. May May second. Right, but it'd be soft stuff, and, and the contractors can still. Well, work. we'll. So you want to do May second? We may. We may, depending on. Um, I'm saying have it over there, Joe Lake. You. Um, we may be able to do this over there. Because by May second, all the screens will be installed, and hopefully everything will be working. We say six o'clock. Fingers crossed. Well, we will. Uh, we will let you know. So stay tuned. For, stay tuned for the location. Okay. So May second, location to be determined. All right. Anybody? Anybody have any other pearls of wisdom for us? All right, hearing none. Motion, motion to adjourn. Second.
Roll call vote. Paul Flyer, D.I. Steve McAvoy, D.I. 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 Don Spargo, I. Justin Ballard, I. All right. Thank you, man.